let's um, talk about the supplies that you need for this project besides your pretty peacock scallop trim ribbon, your metallic brads. I've got my stitched shapes framelit dies. I love that the little oval in the stitched shapes is the perfect um, shape for the itty bitty greetings. Most of them fit right in there and make a cute little tag. So I grabbed up the with gratitude from itty bitty greetings and we're going to cut it out with our stitch shape framelits. Okay. Uh, let's see here. My leaf, my beautiful, look at that gorgeous leaf. That pretty peacock leaf is from the seasonal layers dies. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's like the focal point of the whole project. It's beautiful. Um, what else do I have over here? You want to use your brand new delightful tag topper. And we're going to punch the top for the ribbon hole and the bottom to get that little scallop detail. So I'll show you that in just a minute as you're delightful tag topper stampin pad is soft suede vicky says cute project thank you vicky wait till you see how easy it is it's crazy um i have this um what is it two and three sixteenths by eight and one sixteenth bag i get them from clear bags if you have the two by eight from stampin up that retired last year those work in this project too um you can probably pick up like your uh, pretzel bags from Wilton at your craft store if you like I've got a little treat bag here and for the project you need a couple of scraps for die cutting and a Sahara sand okay let's get the Sahara sand we need a little scrap just some maybe a two by three at, I mean that'll get you two of those little greeting tags you need a scrap of pretty peacock for die cutting your leaf so that's those two. And now these are the ones where you'll need measurements and they matter. I'll rattle them off, but don't worry about writing them down. The project sheet is ready for this except for a picture. So that'll be up soon. And you've got a piece of soft suede cardstock. This one is two by 11 and it will be scored at one and a quarter, three and three quarters and four and an eighth and we'll do that scoring in just a minute and then you've got two pieces of designer series paper this is one and three quarters inch wide by six inches you can go a little bit shorter because nobody's going to notice if your designer series paper goes all the way down to the bottom so you could probably go about two inches shorter even if you wanted to and conserve your paper especially if you're a craft fair crafter so the more of the um, inside paper you can get out of one sheet the better your profits so think about just shortening that down I had a 12 by 6 piece of this designer series paper so I just took one and three quarters off but four four and a half should be long enough and then I've got another designer series paper here with pumpkins and this one is two by six so a little bit wider and if you have patterns that need to be directionally oriented um, watch out for that because this one I've got going vertical and this one horizontal so this outside wrapper piece if you've got a directional pattern make sure you've got your horizontal Judy says I have such cute projects thank you hi Judy hi Anna oh my goodness hey Anna it's good to see you here all right, let's get started. I'm gonna bring in my um, simple score tool and we're gonna do our scoring and punching really quick. Kathy says, love that new designer series paper. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? Um, I am working on a catalog sampler. So I've been cutting into all of my new designer series papers and I couldn't resist, especially given what was going on with my um, Pretty Peacock and my Brad's. I wanted to use those products and this paper is just so perfect. All right, hold on. Somebody asked me if this has a shimmer to it. Susan asked if the pumpkin paper has a shimmer. It does not have a shimmer to it. It's got kind of a linen texture on the background and then shades of brown and Sahara sand. It looks a little bit like a texture. Maybe that's what you caught there, Susan. 
Marie says hello from Germany and good evening. Hello, Marie. Um, good afternoon from Chicago. <laughs> All right, let's do this. This is so simple. You can do this for every um, holiday, every occasion. They're really cute for shower and party favors. Um, good teacher appreciation or bring them to the office for your coworkers and they'll go together fast. Now, something that I'm gonna tell you right now, if you want to make a bunch of these, I've got a two by 11 inch piece. But if you're making a bunch of them, you want to have an 11 by eight inch piece when you go to score. Because when you score an 11 by eight inch piece at the score lines, so let's do that, one and a quarter, and then three and three quarters. I have to go back and look at my project sheet. <laughs> and then four and an eighth. So when you score those marks on an 11 by eight inch piece, you'll be scoring four of them at one time. So one trip to the Simply Scored, three score lines, rotate that 11 by eight inch paper and cut off two inch strips and you have four at one time. Does that make sense? Did everybody get that? Especially if you're a mass producer, you wanna use these for favors or craft fairs. I hope that helps you. But start with four times the width and then cut it into four pieces. All right, enough about that. Let me go and bring in your designer series paper now. So this is the part for your band around the project. And this one is two inches by six inches. And you're going to score this one. It's a little bit tricky. You're gonna score it one and five eighths, so that one mark after a half. And then you're going to score at two inches, then you're gonna slide or shim. What I do here is I sometimes have a piece of um, chipboard that I put in here, but I don't today, so I'm just gonna slide. You're gonna take this paper and slide it over just half of this first eighth. Do you see this first eighth here? You're gonna slide it over halfway between the edge of your Simply Scored and this first mark. And then you're gonna make sure that it's square across the top. And then you're gonna score at four and an eighth. That's one little mark after four and at four and a half, okay? So just one more time, it'll be written out in directional steps too on the project sheet. You're gonna score at one and five eighths and two slide about a sixteenth of an inch and then you're gonna score again four and an eighth and four and a half all right was that intense <laughs> that's it that's the hard part the rest is easy all right so you got your soft suede and you got your designer series paper scored and you got your designer series paper for the inside let's put this thing together all right, let's get some snail adhesive, a bone folder, and some tear and tape. And then I also want my delightful tag topper. Susan says, I explained the hard parts well. Thank you, Susan. I'm also gonna have it written out for those of you who um, do better with a written instruction. It's already typed out on the project sheet. Soft suede and my delightful tag topper punch, and I'm gonna punch. Now you're gonna flip and do the other side. So both sides of this strip. Slide, and away it goes. So there we are. We have got a punch at the top, punch at the bottom. Let's work our score lines now. We're going to bring the two inside score lines up, and then we're going to bring this last score line down. Pretty simple. Now that is it right there, the whole mechanism. Now whatever you put in here, think candy canes, pencils, pixie sticks. In our case we're going to use a bag of hard candies. Um, what else? Licorice sticks, uh, the old-fashioned candy, um, you know the swirl hard ones, hard candies. Get creative. This packaging is awesome for so many different things. You don't want to do um, 
candy, do a nail file or a, um, a pen or a pencil. There's just so many things you can do with this packaging. All right, now the next thing you wanna do with this guy right here, we're gonna use our bone folder and work these creases. Now these are important. You wanna work them outside, um, outside in, inside out. That's what I mean, inside out first. Because when you score designer series paper, especially if it's dry, or if you score with a heavy hand, your pattern can crack. And if it's gonna crack, you want it to crack on the side that you're not using. And then you're gonna turn it around and put it right side in. Inside right, no, right side in, <laughs> right side in. All right, so see that? We've got it going the right direction now. And we're gonna tear and tape. So you wanna tear and tape one side on the inside, and then one side on the outside. What that's gonna do is give you a nice seal. I'll show you as we close it up. All right, let's burnish that down and remove the adhesive liner. Oh, Deborah said maybe chocolate coated pretzel rods. Oh, don't even, those sound delicious right now. I love chocolate covered pretzels. I want mine with sprinkles, please. Oh, or maybe I want a dark chocolate. I think dark chocolate is too serious for sprinkles. I don't know. That sounds delicious. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion, Deborah. All right, so this is the front of our treat package. So lay the front down and bring this dude in here. You're going to tuck. Do you see? We're going to tuck that little flap over the edge. And you're going to bring the front side first. Do you see that? And then the... The one that has the adhesive on the front side first, then the one with the adhesive on the back side, and you're going to bring them together till they're nice and square. Do you see how my sides are nice and square? That's what you want. So you can burnish down your adhesive. And then at the front, you're going to grab either a little tear and tape. You can use your fast views here if you've still got your fast views. I still have a little holdout of fast views. It's my favorite. Uh, but you're going to need a kind of strong adhesive, and you're going to put it underneath the tab here. And this is going to kind of hold the whole thing together. So remove the liner, and then you want to budge this up where you want it. And then center in the designer series paper. Hold it down. See? So now you got a little pocket there. Isn't that a cutie? My goodness, we're almost done. Now that's it, any designer series paper, any color card stock, and you've got a um, treat for all occasions. Awesome. Dazzy just brought me more Werther's candies. So my Werther's candies were um, in my bag from the incentive trip in Greece on the Greek Isles cruise. I'm just adding some snail adhesive to my second designer series paper and centering mm -hmm. it in here. They have the hospitality room that was full of candy. And at the very end, they were like, you know, take some, some extra, take some back to your room or take some to take home. And I had grabbed a couple of Werther's cause I really love these and there's only three left. <laughs> so I had to go out and see what I could find at home that might work for this. And, um, the little pillow packs, and United States are a little bit smaller. So I found these coffee sugar-free ones. Um, these are some of my favorite. I had these in the, in the closet. These are coming out now. These are the Werther's pumpkin spice caramels. So just a couple of different ideas. I've done these before with the little strawberry hard candies because strawberries are my bag. Elizabeth says she took the day off, so for the first time she gets to watch me live. Lovely product as usual. Hey, thank you, Elizabeth. I miss your face, sister. Um, got a couple of Saturday things and Friday night things coming up. Maybe come out and see me. I'm going to throw these pumpkin spice ones in here and see how they fit. I'm not sure about the blue on the coffee ones. I might have to work that blue into the project. It's pretty bold, don't you think? Hmm. All right, slide to the side. These are the regular Werther's. The sh they're not sugar-free, and they're wrapped like drops here. All right, so I'm threading my ribbon. This is the 
um, single-sided scallop ribbon. So you can see I'm threading it upside down from the front of the package to the back. And I've given myself a good, I don't know, probably eight inches here. All right. And it's underneath the treat bag. What I'm going to do now is bring this around so that the front side is up. See, that's why it was, that's why we fed it in with the back side up. Is that clear? Does that help? Working with single-sided ribbon can sometimes be difficult. I hope that this isn't tedious, but it helps you to um, work better with single-sided ribbon. All right, so then we've got our bow ready to go here, or we're ready to make a bow. And you see that it turned out so that we've got the front side and the back side. What we want to do is just give that a little finesse. Now we're front side front. We're going to lift up. No twisting. Just lift up we got our first loop and our first tail and they're all the right way that's good right now we're gonna take the one that's over top or up and we're gonna bring it over top this is the only place that we're gonna see the back of the ribbon is in the little bow at the center you see that because when we tuck this one back through now we've got another loop that's got the right side up so we'll pull that tight and then you want to take your last tail and twist it bend it to your will make it right side up and then pull it tight to give it some finesse now see that you've got a bow from the single sided ribbon that's all pretty side forward cool you guys got that did that help then i'm going to grab some scissors for ribbon if i can find them aha and trim off the excess and you see there's also no waste because we tied it from the spool. All right, let's get this thing decorated, should we? All right, so there's my little leaf. I just die cut that. Now I'm gonna stamp my sentiment and then die cut it. So I need some soft suede and it's buried in candy, I think. Oh no, here it is. Let me just slide this guy over and let's stamp our sentiment first. I tried to stamp the sentiment on the little oval tag, but for some reason I just could not get it inside the tag right. So for me it was much easier to stamp my sentiment and cut it out with the oval. And then you don't have to worry so much about is it uphill or downhill. So there's our little with gratitude. Let's get that up here now. And we'll frame it with the oval. Now we want to frame it so that the E is kind of tucked right in the end of the oval here, and we've got room for the brad. We've got a little piece of washi tape there. I don't want to lose my placement after we worked so hard to get it right. Give that a crank. All right. Try not to w wiggle you guys too much. It's not perfect. I love how this oval cuts out those itty bitty greetings. You'll see that me doing that a lot more because I just love it. All right, pull, put our ink away before I put my project in it. Let's get our dude back in here. I've got my dye brush and I lost my leaf. Man, I say that too much on Facebook Live. I don't know how I lose things so easy. All right, let's roll that guy out of there. I love my dye brush. I'm so glad that um, even though Stampin' Up! retired the dye brush and the mats, they did um, give us a attachment for the Take Your Pick tool and new mats. So if you don't have this little dye brush, it's okay. There's an option for you. But look at how nice it just clears most everything away and the mess stays in the pad. So... I think I got a couple of little spots up at the top here that I want to poke out. Got my take your pick tool just for those details. This leaf is just so gorgeous and it cut through in one pass. Did you see that? Not very crisp. All right. Well, I've got my take your pick tool and my little dye brush mat here. I'm going to just poke a starter hole in for my brad. Did you see that? 
So now I can get that brad in there without any trouble. I'm going in for that little button shape brad again. I love that dude. Too cute. Could probably even use the copper one on this one since the candies are kind of gold and copper. Eh, too late. I already got the gold one in there. Um, Diane said, what size bag did I use for the goodies? I used a clear bags bag. It's, I'll give you the measurements here in just a second. You can use the one that's um, like the Wilton one for pretzel rods. You can use the two by eight that were stamping up and retired. Mine is uh, clear bags, two and three sixteenths by eight and one sixteenth inch bag. Now for this dude, I put my brad so that it was angled. At first I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> then it came to me. I, could, I didn't have to open the brad like a brad's supposed to be open. Do you ever have those aha moments where you just figure it out? I was kind of impressed that I figured it out, but a little disappointed in myself that it took so long. <laughs> and lots of dimensional adhesive. All right. It's all exposed. It's sticky. What I'm going to do is place my leaf where I want it. And then, because it's so delicate, I don't want glue everywhere. I'm going to just come down with my extra dimensionals and trap it. So no need to get all that little leaves covered with adhesive you can just trap it between the dimensionals see there it is we did it with gratitude all right guys i'm gonna go get some stuff done if you need me email me